Test, test, test. Test, 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 test. Hmm. Test, test. Test, test. Test, 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 test. Test, 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 test. Test, 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 test. Beep boop boop. Beep beep beep. Boop boop beep beep boop. Test test test. Uh, testing. Sound check. 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 Eleven C this time, huh? Or if it is, it's not very noticeable. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Test. Uh oh. Oh, stinky. Try this again. Test. Test, 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 test. Hands work. Lip syncing is okay. Very good. Move this out of the way. There we go. <coughs> My voice probably sounds a lot less smooth. That's what happens when I wake up early in the morning to do these streams. I sound like a completely different person. Probably. <laughs> Glad that my mic is not being picked up on the uh, HD capture device either. That would be very unfortunate. Good morning, Nar. How are you doing? We rarely get to see you in this program anymore, so I'm so happy when you do manage to arrive. Thank you so much for the resubscription. You've been like one of the longest subscribers on my channel. Uh, rivaled only by Aislin and Steel. I, you know I really appreciate you. I can give you a nice snug. Get to visit. How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? Love you too. Hey, one second.
Do not break my power, my uh, chords. Let's put on some music in the background too, shall we? Hmm? We can. Okay, you know what? Maybe it's time if these if it's not time to get new ear pads for my headset. Well, I hope it's only at ear pads. I am I know that I don't have hearing problems. There's just something weird about ear pads are pressing on my left ear a little too much, causing pressure, which then causes this false sense of something is wrong with me when there really isn't. You're chilling super hard today? Well, that's good to hear because we will also be chilling super hard today. Today's stream, we are not playing Strive, we are doing some creative writing. The first I've done in a long time, so it's going to be very rough. I will, of course, be open to questions about my process, and if y'all have anything you would like to talk about or would like me to describe or to explain things uh, during the course of the stream, you are more than welcome to. The creative writing project I have chosen for today's stream will be involving a... A giveaway that I had done a few months ago at this point, maybe a couple months ago, when I reached some previous milestones, I was going to write some VTuber lore for another VTuber named Christian. However, I have had not been able to make time for it for a little bit because of what this or that. So we're making time for it today. Uh, when I was first collecting information for the kind of VTuber lore he would like for his character, I asked for and got received permission from him to record our conversation uh, for the perusal of people on YouTube. I was planning on starting a new project where I would be doing what are essentially podcasts to, or for YouTubers who wanted to create their own lore to kind of give a rundown of how the creative process, how I go around, go about the creative process of eventually up getting them to create VTuber lore for themselves. I'm just doing the writing. I'm not actually doing the creating of the content. Although I will be basing going off of basically what we have discussed. Um this only our conversation is only about an hour or so. The other 30 minutes is usually us uh get posting about something. <laughs> actually hobbies or video games or whatever. I did something like this for I did do something like this and it was posted for a different VTuber also named uh named Yukari. He actually put this was actually less VTuber lore and more like a VTuber background on himself, which he then used for his about page on Twitch. So very nice for him to do that. Got this nice little thumbnail for that as well. And this one is the first one I did is more for actual like character lore. Christian is a jungle elf. He is also a chef. Like yo. Like yo. So we went through the process of kind of extrapolating on what he would like or done with his character, what he wanted to have done with his character, and um basically what direction or how did he go from being a jungle elf to eventually VTubing? Which is always something I kind of want to explore in VTuber lore, because for a lot of VTubers, I feel like it's just, here's this really fancy lore, and uh, for some reason, I VTube. <laughs> I feel like it adds a little bit more immersion if you were to explain why your eldritch, mythical, hyper technological, technological being got into streaming themselves online playing video games and it doesn't need to be anything too complicated i've seen some creatures that literally their in-game lore is that they do this as a hobby something to pass the time to spend time with mortals and sometimes that's all you need sometimes that's all that's expected and it works because that's Totally the sort of thing that would ha would probably possibly happen. I mean, it's not like just because you are this or that that you suddenly stop having humanistic ho or regular human person hobbies. Even if you are not a human in any sense of the word, it's good to have kind of uh what's the word I'm looking for? 
a kind of segue into VTubing in that manner because it kind of does add a little bit of humanity to you, makes you a little bit more relatable. Be like, haha, see, this person, despite being completely separate from me, is actually not also different. And not just because the person playing the character is actually human themselves. Not that I would know, being that I'm not human at all. <laughs> Although I do a great job at pretending, or so I've been told. So what are we going to do here? Basically just open this up on the side. It's been a while since I've seen my own vid, but this is over an hour long or so. so we're going to go through it together. I need going to put some, jot down some notes. As we go along, as I struggle to remember what his story was like, and then we'll actually get to the writing once we have gathered enough information. So what do we currently know about Christian E.T.? So, Wood Elf... I'm gonna make this a bigger so chat can actually read it. I have a tendency to say Wood Elf out of habit. Same. Be because mm -hmm. usually when you think of elves yeah. that live in trees, you think of wood elves from like D and D and uh, Elder Scrolls. But Sorry. I'm pretty sure. But the uh, Christian uh, specifies uh, that he is a jungle uh, yeah. elf, so we will I'm attempt to not uh, not misracial him, <laughs> not uh, misspecies him over the course of this stream, which unfortunately I do quite often in the course of our previous conversation. Unfortunately. <laughs> so, like I said before, we're just going to go ahead and go over your character and see what kind of lore we can create. You can also either choose to write yourself or over the course of discussing what you, what kind of lore you're hoping to get out of your character or make for your character, I could also write it for you, or attempt to, I should say. <laughs> Nothing too formal. Um, mostly the recording thing I asked that was kind of so I could look over my own work, see if there's a better, if I can do things a better way. This is kind of like an informal teaching session, more or less. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. And I just kind of turned on the VTuber stuff just because I thought it would be fun to do so uh, in form. So Christian, go ahead and tell me about your character to start off. Um, I noticed that they appear to be a wood elf chef of some kind. I will, yeah, I'm a wood, wood elf, but I, I call it a jungle elf because I, I live near a jungle. See what I mean there? So they're a jungle elf, not a wood elf. Oh, I see, a jungle elf. A jungle elf. This is also important for another reason, chat. When you create works, first off, if, if by now you probably have constantly heard that there's no such thing as true originality, what there is, what there actually is, are think concepts and things we've all seen before that have been done in a new, unique, or exciting way. If you constantly try to make something that's perfectly original, you're going to be disappointed in yourself first off as you're going to find out that it's, no, it's not original. Um, and also, someone's going to call you out, and also, it's going to drive you nuts, frankly. But because of this um, tendency for us to try and immediately 
draw a distinction, draw a correlation between something that we are experiencing for the first time and our own personal experience and our own personal taste and what we have personally discovered. We have a tendency to immediately, when we hear something or hear someone tell us about something, immediately jump to, oh, that's just like such and such. Sometimes that can be fairly annoying, but it is a very common thing to do. It's a very natural thing to do. It's not something to be offended over. Sometimes when I try to describe my own works, I have a problem of trying to describe it in terms of what it's similar to. And at, that's also not a good practice for a couple of reasons. The first reason being, if you describe your work as being too similar to something that's already out there, one has to wonder, then why should I read or watch your work if I could just watch the original? Which is not a good look. Uh, second, if they've never experienced that original work, then it's not going to mean anything. It's going to be a nothing burger, as Charlie likes to say. For example, in my own science fiction, my first science fiction novel, Fade Out, I used to describe it as, oh, I'm basically kind of like Firefly and Cowboy Bebop, uh, except in written form. And then, of course, I would get, push, I would get uh, comments like, what's Firefly? I've never seen Firefly. Which I know, right? How have you never seen Firefly? It's only been several years. <laughs> the only... Um, so yeah, that's it's even if it's accurate, not necessarily the best thing to do. Instead of describing it like that, describe it, uh, describe it more about well, what is the story about? It is a story about a disgraced uh starship naval captain or naval officer who builds it, who commissions and builds his own starship and collects together a whole bunch of ragamuffins that are also running away from their own problems and they go on an adventure uh, go on an adventure through space trying to make ends meet while escaping from an increasing number of people who want to either kill them or sell them into slavery among other things and there you go that's uh, my first science fiction novel more or less very simplified and you could kind of draw a distinction between many other stories which have similar premises. Um, but it's still a lot better than saying it's like this because it's like them, but not like them. And not everyone, unfortunately, has seen Star Wars or Fade Out for that. Or not Star Wars or Firefly for that matter. It's only been out two years, 16 years ago. Two years ago, 16 years ago or something like that. Yeah, I know, right? It's been forever since Firefly was last on the air and was abruptly canceled. Joss Whedon has since moved on to other things, like making a uh, Marvel movie number 2079 or something. <laughs> Actually, does Joss Whedon even make Mar or even direct for Marvel anymore? And, you know, in retrospect, Firefly wasn't the greatest show ever. It was a good show, in my opinion. Not the greatest ever, but it was a show that came out during a time when there weren't that many spacecraft shows outside of Star Trek. Outside of Star Trek. I mean, I guess you got Battlestar Galactic, the uh, remake of Battlestar Galacto. Was that around the same time? No, that was later. Because I remember when Firefly first came out, there weren't that many shows about take that took place in space. If there were before it that were those really campy ones that everyone that were everyone has fond memories of, like um, like uh, I don't want to say Stargate because Stargate made fun of the campy shows. Um, in fact, Stargate parodied several of the campy space shows that came before it. Um. Which are now, which I now can't remember because it's been that long since they were on the air. But I remember distinctly Stargate making fun of other science fiction shows because that's just how Stargate was. They always they had a really good job, did a really good job of balancing uh, the seriousness of their tone, which was, and it, believe me, Stargate was a very serious show, with the um, with the humor that was inherent in the characters and the writing. Because if they didn't, it would be far too depressing of a show to watch. Um, but they did that a lot. Oh wait, Farscape. Yes, Farscape. 
Farscape was extremely camp. It was like Star Trek without the hard science. <laughs> that that was super serious. <laughs> it was very hard to take seriously. I'm probably showing my age, even saying the name Farscape. <laughs> uh, my true age, my meat space age. But um, I digress. So um, so after Firefly, you also got Battlestar Galactica, the remake Battlestar Galactica. You got. Star Trek start getting a lot of new shows, and then you got all this cool stuff. So, um, but a lot of those shows had similar concepts. I mean, technically, even freaking Star Trek, uh, Deep Space, not Deep Space Nine, uh, Star Trek Voyager was kind of the same premise. Pretty much a starship gets lost in the middle of nowhere and has all these high adventures. Oh, thank you for the headbats. <laughs> So, um, yeah, similar thing. You know what? Maybe I should invest in new headset, in a new headset or something, because this is starting to annoy the shit out of me, and it only happens... Well, no, I didn't have this problem yesterday. I know it's different. It might even be my hair getting in the way. I can't get over the feeling like this is really pressing on my ear, causing or pressing on my ear, causing pressure on my ear. <laughs> okay. You know, this is a nice compromise. How's that? I'll just make it looser. No, let's continue. Uh, done. I, I, I mean, that's basically, I, I like to cook, but I personally, I, I like to take care of my, uh, my... You're trying to run yours as long as possible, but it's starting to become annoying with the right ear losing sound because it lose contact. Oh, I know that feeling. I used to have a Razer um, Kraken. For the longest time. And I only replaced it with the Black Shark recently because I pulled one to con pulled yeah, I kind of I don't need know if I stepped on or pulled the um the uh oxen not oxen, uh the uh, three point five jack a little too hard, but I ended up pulling one of the uh, contacts out or loosening one of the contacts and making it so that same issue you have where the uh, music or the sound would either cut out or just get really soft from time to time. I don't have the know-how or the technology to pull it apart and sold it to back on properly, so I just had to replace it. I still have it somewhere, though. Cool, but war, I mean, I... Hey, villain legend. Long time no see. I'm surprised it still says first chat, first time chat. I could have sworn I've seen you around before. How are you doing today? Welcome to the stream. We are just doing a creative writing stream today, and we're going back through a podcast I had with a VTuber whom I was going to, I am writing VTuber lore for, and occasionally I'll stop to talk about my own experiences writing, after doing creative writing, my own process. So welcome to the stream. You're chilling like a villain. <laughs> uh, a villain after my own heart. I'm glad that you love creative writing as well. I hope that this uh, stream will be enjoyable to you. Um, we are in a very relaxed state today. I also have not done any serious creative, serious creative writing in a while, so I hope I will not be too rusty. I've needed a, an excuse to go back to it for a while now, so that's part of the reason. The other reason we're doing this, I've been kind of uh, putting Christian's uh, work on the um, veritable the veritable uh, sh uh, shelf for a little too long. We're going to be getting into it to finally get this done for them. <laughs> By the way, do y'all want me to play any music in the background? I can probably do that. I'm just trying to look for where is the music stored. I purchased the soundtrack for Guilty Gear Strive through Steam recently. So, I would like to play that. And I don't think I need to log into Steam to play it either. I just need to figure out where it's stored. Hmm. 
Hmm. I, I can go to Guilty Gear's Tribe pretty easily, and there's even an application here for it, which is only 410 kilobits, which is... Wow. Under Guilty Gear's Tribe, it says here, Company Epic Games Incorporated. That's dumb. It's probably referring to uh, Unreal. That's extra, so it's not there. I could probably look it up earlier. <laughs> you have to enter in your age just to just to access the soundtrack of Guilty Gear Strive. There's a lyric booklet that's included with the physical release? I didn't know that. Now, I want to know is where is, where are they stored? I can't believe they made a game for this soundtrack. How is Babby formed? How is Guilty Meme stored? Hmm. You know, I'm almost wondering if they store it in the app data. Like... So it seems like a sort of thing that they would do. For some reason, people like tossing things in the app data. I might just cheat and log into Steam on this computer to check to I just go to it directly instead of trying to yeah let me log into Steam really quick so we can get some music to play in the background <laughs> Browse local files. Oh, no way. It's actually, it's literally in the music folder. <laughs> All right. Well, I know that for next time, I guess. Now then. And I'm going to put this stuff here on a... Add this to Hmm. Can you not play this with Winamp? So you can. Where's Winamp though? Who goes there? Who goes there? General Keys, thank you so much for the follow. One second. Need to turn off what thank you for the head pats. I needed to shut down Winamp for a second there because I couldn't figure out where the program was so I could reduce the volume. Welcome to the stream. My name is Laura Hicks. I'm a show poster AI. Uh, you're now part of the Lost Time show, and I hope you enjoy yourself. 
you're now officially a lowly. How are you doing this morning? We are doing some creative writing this morning. I'm just looking for some music to play in the background, and I've chosen Guilty Gear Strive for that purpose. By the way, uh, how did you find me? Did you see one of my ads on Discord? Did you get recommended, recommended on Twitch? Twitter? Pretty bored? Well, hopefully we can do something about the boredom. <laughs> Once I figure out how to do this properly. I don't know why. I don't know why Winamp is not displaying properly. This happens a lot. Okay, for whatever reason, it is not displaying. I suspect it's because Winamp doesn't know how to display a wave file, but at the same time, it's like... Why? Right? I think what it might also be is Winamp might still think that it's on... Might still think that it's on... Uh, monitor 4, which is currently being used to run my streaming PC. You found me through the recommendeds? Wow. You're the second person to say that. I like that, the fact that I'm actually be showing up on the recommends list now for people's, uh, for people's algorithm. Who says that the Twitch algorithm is not useful? Either that or me, all those tags I put in there are actually working. Can't believe I'm saying this, chat, but until I get this Winamp situation straightened out, we will be having to use a Windows Media Player. We're really kicking it old school now, choosing this thing. Of course, it doesn't even show me a list of all the music I have queued, so it's like... I'm surprised even him with news media players still going on in here. really wish that it was just good god where is vlc i mean i have vlc too but i usually use vlc for playing video not for using not for playing music so yeah i could do this for vlc as well Ah, fuck it. Windows Media Player it is. 
Add to Windows Media Player List. Add to Windows Media Player List. Lower the volume. To, uh, There we go. Sound check, sound check. Winter, welcome to the stream. How are you doing this morning? Welcome, welcome. Do you are? Do do. Who's the volume? Definitely need to lower the volume a little bit more on the music here so that we can actually hear what's going on. I'm gonna just play it in the background there. Oh man, is it so low that it's actually not hearable? Drag Race finally has a Philippine version, so I'm watching that. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad that it's finally made its way to the Philippines. Seems confident too. <laughs> Dark backstory. Uh, dark backstory. It looks like Christian has already decided that they're going to be the Batman. I'm kidding. Uh, their character is actually a lot more friendly than that. Believe it or not. It's kind of, but it is going, he is going for a sort of caught between two worlds type vibe. It appears that I have completely lo I have lost track of where Windows Media Player is now. There it is. There we go. There we go. We'll put it down to two. What do you mean by that exactly? I don't know. The... And I think you could still. It's really good with the, with knives. I like think I'm afraid cool. of this of no, the music. Like, uh... Uh... Good conflicting with the this is probably not gonna work we're just going into the wing it chat like yo so our fable our important fabled ceremonial ceremonial in chris christian's uh society all in human years we go with uh with knives you can also either choose to write yourself or over the course of discussing what you, what kind of lore you're right. hoping to get out of your character or make for your character, I can also write it for you or attempt to, I should say. <laughs> Nothing too formal. Um, mostly the recording thing I asked that was kind of so I could look over my own work, see if there's a better, if I can do things a better way. This is kind of like an informal teaching session more or less. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No problem. And I just kind of turned on the VTuber stuff just because I thought it would be fun to do so uh, in form. A lot of people surprisingly don't realize that you can just video call in your VTuber form. You can even do this with live 2D, believe it or not. You appear to be a wood elf chef of some kind. Well, yeah, I'm a wood elf, wood elf but I, I call it a jungle elf because I, I live near a jungle. You know? oh, I see, a jungle elf. A jungle elf. Uh, and I, I, mean, I mean, that's basically, I, I like to cook, but I personally, I, I like to take care of my, of my tools of work, my knives. And I, I wanted to grab that and like just maybe like a... a Dark, dark backstory or something? Uh, by dark backstory, what do you mean by that exactly? I don't know. The, it's he's really good with uh, with knives, but like not cooking good. Oh, like uh, not, not good as a chef. He's good as a chef, but he's better using the. So, is that like his, is being a chef like what he moonlights as while being? Um, something else that requires the use of knives in a presumably uh, most violent manner is like their real job or tell me about that uh well i was thinking maybe like a a, lo a, lo a long 
like a, like an old like warrior, warrior or something, or something. And, the, and the and the cook cooking, cooking is like the the re redemption. redemption. They did they stuff did that they are not proud of. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. So we will quickly find out. I we will quickly in, uh, end up. Years um, two elven years or? Yeah, all, well, actually, all human years. I see. He actually ends up abandoning, or we decide to abandon this concept for a little bit more unique one. Elf, but <laughs> not so he becomes elf. less Batman and more. Yeah, someone pushed into. I see. I see. Unfortunate circumstances. Um, but very well, not as much tragedy. So, out of curiosity, and partly out of curiosity, and also just to get an idea of how you got the inspiration for your character, um, are you a chef in the real world, in Meat Space World, in the real world? I'm a, a gastronomy student. So, kind of, yeah. I see. Was that the direct inspiration for your elf character, or did you just uh, feel well, like. Not, not that direct uh, for the elf, but for the idea of the character, yes. Totally. So, the, like, totally, or? The, 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 Can I speed it up a little bit? Yes, no, no, because I, 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 I'm a chef. Well, I'm a cooking uh, a gastronomy student, so... Oh, I see, that's cool. You're actually the second, maybe third, uh, cook or VTuber that I've met who is a cook in the real world, surprisingly. There's a lot of cooking VTubers for some reason. Not it's a bad thing, it's just a very surprising thing. The other person I know who is also a chef in the real world also has a cooking VTuber, which is kind of an interesting coincidence. So. Cool. Cool. Incidentally, you mentioned that they're sort of an old warrior type person, relatively old by human standards, but are they young by their specific race standards or middle age? Yeah, they are young for an elf. Usually elves live. Thousand, thousand I see. Um, and also, is this what kind of society we're looking at here? Uh, is being a warrior type person very common in this, or in Chris, Christian's uh, society, or is it a very specialized field? Or? Well, I feel it's actually quite common because the jungle, the jungle is, is quite harsh. But the the idea of the character is that he didn't. Like, like, like it, like it, for, for how to say it. He did not enjoy being a this kind of person, or he didn't like how much his life was based on that. Because he he lived for for he used to live to just kill for the tribe. And was he? I see. So he used to pretty much. This was kind of his uh. What's that word I'm looking for? This is his, this was his pre original. Um, it's a Latin word, Latin phrase. Um, it's not Latin. What the hell am I thinking? It's a French phrase. Uh, rise, I, I'm going to completely destroy this because I can't speak French to save my life. Uh, raison d'être, or reason to live, basically. Reason for. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that could be it. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm really bad trained in my own stories. That's fine. Um, Sorry. Uh, Basically, throughout the process, I'm going this interview I'm having with you and your character right now is meant both to get an idea of what you've already created and also to hopefully build a scaffolding upon which you can naturally and organically create your own ideas uh, for your character, which is part of what this uh, whole session is about. Not necessarily just me writing or you writing everything, but basically to create the lore, period. <laughs> Oh, yeah. um, so don't feel like buster or anything. It's okay to not know at this time. Hopefully, over the course of us uh, working together over the course of weeks or however long it takes, really, uh, we'll be able to get a better idea of who Christian the VTuber. Well, not Christian the VTuber. Well, yeah, Christian the VTuber is. Um, and hopefully that you will be able to integrate that more into your content if you so wish, or it could just be a fun thing to say that oh, I have a school OC sort of deal, whatever you like, really. That's another thing. When I, for example, my own character here, when I first started VTubing, I was actually getting it using an alternate Twitch account that I had not used for a while. That just happened to be that I named Lol's Time back in the day. Uh, and I decided to build the VTuber that I was creating off of that uh, interesting naming scheme. Uh, my own VTuber is, my own VTuber identity is a mix of a different OC from one of my science fiction novels and also 
a um, believe it or not an idol master character <laughs> uh that i used to not feed to but to uh who who a live 2d character that i used to use when streaming to discord with some friends just for funsies and i built i created a vroid version of that to add a little bit, mixed in a few things from a certain oc and that's how you got Lawler Hicks. And over time, I kind of refined uh, the character's background and retcon a few things and add some things. I originally wasn't going to include any sort anything that had to do with my previous community, Danger U. But then I decided to embrace my Dark Origins as a shit poster AI that was born on a text board. And part of that is that there's this joke running through the text board that there's no real people that actually post there. It's really just the same bot talking with itself. Sometimes it does seem that way, not gonna lie. Um, um, so, so back to what we were discussing. Um, so basically, to go over, uh, so far we have that you kind of have the, as far as tropes go, you kind of have the... Uh, you basically have Kenshin Himura from Rurou and Kenshin. You got the whole um, that you're previously a kind of warrior-ish, kind of. I don't want to. I don't want to like say any very specific words that you haven't already said, uh, just so I don't accidentally influence your thought process. Like, um, for example, you. That happens a lot more often than you would think, believe it or not. Where, in a, in a um, teacher's attempt to teach a student, and and actually creating artistic works is such a nightmare sometimes unless you have very clear bounds that you're trying to go for. You don't want to accidentally inf overly influence the student's work to the point where they're just becoming a clone of yourself. When I was in high school, we had, as our, we had this uh, teacher that she was fairly good at what she did, but it became kind of a joke in class that if you wanted to get a good grade in her class, you basically just need to let her work, do your work, do your art, or do or make something according to what she would want. So sometimes when she's like trying to help you with whatever you're working on, she would get a little too into it and end up like doing a lot of it for you. So. A lot of students found out that the easy way to get through the class was just to uh, do whatever she was doing and then copy it to almost exactly or like follow the same trend or the same train of thought, which completely ruined basically creative their creative expression and became more of a regurgitation. I'm... I think a lot of teachers still like to use that word when they tell you exactly what not to do in high school and especially in college. College is when they really start telling you like, hey, I don't want you to just retell what you learned in class. You're supposed to form this into your own words. But how do you do that when for years beforehand you were being told to follow exactly what they told you to do, right? Um, so as a result, when I try to help people with creative writing now, I try to avoid falling to that trap myself, even though it's very easy to get into. After all, um, especially when I'm trying to teach creative writing to people from a completely different culture than mine, like, um, hey, Steel, smooth Saturday, you bet? Why don't you Steel? Um, anyway, so you would often run into, I would often run into this issue, especially with people from completely different cultures where they would have writing traits that I'm not familiar with. As an example, um, some Russian friends I have have sometimes come to me for writing advice and they always give me their works to try and uh, to get proofread or to get feedback on. And one of them had this very lyrical, had this very poetic, very lyrical approach to creative writing. And I did not at that time understand this. And also at that time, my understanding and my experience with Russian literature, of which there's a vast, very detailed, very um, rich writing culture, literature culture in Russia and in other Slavic nations. Um, I didn't understand wh where they were coming from. It was a very... It had a tendency to repeat a lot of words to, like, 
not like kind of the closest thing I could think of to use an example would be there is a very common scheme in Chinese writing too of repeating very fun, very fun sounding, very um, fun sounding words within the text. Um, and it sounds almost like music, almost like um, it goes from almost like going from prose to lyrics of a song. I did not pick up on that immediately. I thought it was, and I don't think I really marked this as problematic. I think I marked it off as some, I, I kind of questioned their choice of why were they doing this a lot. And then they explained to me that this was actually a very common thing in Russian literature to, oh, ah, then boy, thank you very much for the Hydra Redeem. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing this morning? <laughs> uh, yeah, I would not say I'm internationally famous just yet, although I do have many followers from across the, across the world, which I am very happy for many, especially for, ah, who, who threw somebody in the face? Ah, ah, hard, this is, this must be what humans refer to as a hard love. Thank you for the hat. <laughs> How are you doing this morning, then boy? I am doing some uh, holding a creative writing workshop today. Or attempting to. If I have time, I'm hoping to get some story writing done of Christian VT's VTuber Lord I've been sitting on for the longest time. Two minutes past midnight, still dying, but getting better. Aw. Well, I hope you get better quicker. Uh, I really should consider just, if not getting a new headset, then, hmm. Well, actually, let me try putting it on backwards and see what happens. Well, there is a difference. There's not as much pressure in my left ear when I reverse the ears. Maybe I should just get them little earbud things, them air air potty air poops that seem to be so common, or seem to be so popular with people nowadays, huh? Even though in ear earphones are actually worse for your ears than over the ear headphones by far. It reminds me of a style of Shakespeare that dips into some soliloquies. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day, to the last syllable of recorded time. Yeah, Steele, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, the way that they wrote had a lot of reuse of words in that manner. And at the time that I was reading it, I did not realize that that was what they were going for. This was intentional. And it there's a long history in Russian literature of using this process. So when he explained that to me, I, I apologized first off. <laughs> I kind of felt kind of like a bigot. <laughs> So I apologize first off, and I tried to keep in mind those little distinctions of Russian literature that may have influenced their writing style. Because that's another thing. When you are editing someone's work, you need to, and other people, you need to be very careful about not muting the person's voice, which I think is a very common and easy to do mistake. I get this with my. I get this a lot with um when other people read my work. They also tell me this too. They they try to they try to pick up on the kind of voice that I'm speaking with throughout the story, and try to not let their own personal biases influence that influence that. Instead, what they try to do is they first off may go through and pick out actual grammar and punctuation errors, and they try to um give feedback on how they felt that my voice, how effective my voice was at conveying what I was attempting to convey with throughout the story. Um, and I'll give you as an example, they sound like Garbo and fester your ears. <laughs> um, Garbo, I'm not surprised with festering ears. I'm also not surprised. I don't like ear pods or ear in ear headphones. If I can avoid them just because I don't, 
like sticking shit in my ears, which is funny coming from someone that still cleans their ears out with earbuds. But um, mask drop Sennheiser, easy life. Um, now, as an example, I'm not sure how much, how many of you read uh, military fiction. Military fiction is a very large departure from other forms of science fiction because at least the military fiction I've read according to the name they do tend to be written from the standpoint or from or they try to be written from the standpoint of what might be the perspective of someone in the military they tend to have placed a lot of emphasis on things like uh, military time on things like military code um, things like things that may come across to other people as boring or as um, kind of dry with the kind of procedural, basically. Um, crime fiction is like that, too, where they tend to be very procedural. I was a huge fan of the girl of the Millennium Trilogy, the girl with the dragon, ta the girl with the dragon tattoo. And even as a big fan as I am of Stieg Larsson and his works, I must admit the first book was extremely dry. <laughs> the first half of freaking The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo was really fucking boring. That's why a lot of people can't read it. Actually, because it is so boring. But if you can make your way through it, it's very good. And part of the reason why it's like that is because Stieg Larsson's experience, he is a journalist. Was a journalist. Rest in peace, Stieg Larsson. Um... And he goes, he went through much of the book in a very procedural manner, as a very investigative manner, because at the end of the day, it is a series of crime novels. It is a series of detective novels surrounding around the disappearance of this woman who disappeared decades ago. And the premise seems very cut and dry. And around halfway through the book, it just goes from zero to 60. And you're kind of being held on to the book in part because of the second uh, deuteronagonist of um, Elizabeth Sounder, Sounder, a punkish pro-hacker who is also a woman and who is also very short and apparently flat-chested, which I thought was also funny that Steve just goes on this whole thing where he, descri where he describes the fact that Sa Elizabeth Sounder is flat-chested. <laughs> um... So you're held on to that, and when you are reviewing books, it's one thing to criticize the stories for being very dry. If I was writing a similar story, I would have probably done my best to keep the reader's attention, not just for the reader, but also for myself, so I don't fall the fuck asleep when I'm reading my own works. And that's something that happens a lot too when I'm rereading my own works where I read, read it back and I think to myself, how's the flow? How's the speed of this story? Is it keeping keeping people awake? Um, is it... Is it... Um, is the reader going to be confused? Um, I do have a tendency to sometimes go into flow of consciousness when I'm writing. Especially on first pass instead instead of like the second and third passes, so this may tend to happen where I might have a tendency to not con con to where I might not the reader might not connect the dots from one thought process to the other. Um, as an example, especially in the most recent novel I attempted to write, which was for Nana Rimo a couple years ago, and it was also another attempt at military fiction on my part which I was pulling a lot of from um, Sandy Mitchell's Caiaphas Kane trilogy, or Caiaphas, not trilogy, Caiaphas Kane novels. I'm sorry to get lightheaded. I need to give myself a hydrate reading. One second, chat. <laughs> Believe it or not, Elizabeth Sounder did not have uh, hipster glasses. Because she was based off of punk culture, not hipster culture, punk culture. I'm talking grunge. I'm talking freaking tats all up the ass. I'm talking like freaking piercings fucking everywhere. Wild hair. Because 
even though the movie adapted Liz of Sandler to be more of um, our current generation idea of punk, the books were written in the early 2000s. And you could tell that the books were written in the early 2000s because Elizabeth Sounder kind of salivates over buying this really expensive Mac book. Think about this. Back when Macs were good and were worth the price price tag, back when something like, um, I, don't, I don't know what it was. What was it like? Uh, what was it? it was like a 500 megahertz processor or something. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny reading the description of the specs of the computer because back then they were top of the line but today <laughs> we're not even in the pentiums anymore okay we don't even use the term pentium processor anymore <laughs> to give you an idea of how of the time that this was being written in um another major difference between the movies and the books in the books um the main character of the main character of fuck uh what is the name of the main character of the girl with the dragon tattoo that was not Lisbeth Sounder um the girl with the dragon tattoo Mikhail Blomqvist, who is totally not a stand-in for Stieg Larsson himself. Totally not, chat. Totally. Okay, I kid. Look. I stand by what I always say that everyone's first writing attempt will involve a character that is a Gary Sue or a Mary Sue. Stieg Larsson does a pretty good job of avoiding, avoiding Gary Stewism, but it's pretty obvious that Mikhail Blomqvist himself is Stieg Larsson's XP. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, as long as you're still able to write the, your, the character that is yourself in a, such a way that they are not a Gary Stu. But going to what a Gary Stu is would take a different session altogether. But um, yeah, Mikhail Bonkfis has this whole line in the book where Elizabeth Sounder very easily cuts through his... Uh, computer security the funny thing is back then what he considered security was he writes something like to the effect of i had a password on my computer and elizabeth is like yeah <laughs> is that supposed to mean something to me right and in today's world putting a password on your p on your windows pc i'm sorry it doesn't do check all it takes five minutes to look up online how to bypass that. I guess it would be on brand for me as a shitposter AI to tell you how to bypass a Windows PC, a Windows PC uh, password lock, wouldn't it? Nah, nah. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> All I'll say is it's 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 stupidly easy. You don't you don't need to do anything illegal. Although it's prob it is it would be illegal for you to go into someone's computer without the consent and to use um, a certain process to bypass the password on their computer. But the process through which to make the devices that you would need to do that, not illegal at all. And very simple. But in the movie, at least in the Hollywood film, I don't know if this is true for the uh, Swedish film, in the Hollywood film, Mikhail Bonkfist says, my computer was encrypted. And yes, it would be more difficult to break into someone's computer if you use actual encryption. Elizabeth Sounder just says, please. And then that's all she says about it. She doesn't go into any detail or harps on Mikhail like she does in the book about how, that, how stupid that is, thinking that, oh, you putting a password protection on your computer would stop me. She literally just says, please, oh, please. And then goes on to explaining what's on his computer. It is possible to break encryption on someone's computer, but it would be more time consuming and it would take a longer time by far. And besides, the way she went about, I believe, in the movie and the book was through using a keylogger anyway, so it's kind of a moot point. It's not like she didn't break into her computer directly from like having access to it directly, I don't think. Did she? No, yeah. 
Yeah, she she did the spy she did the spyware route, I'm pretty sure. Because I'm pretty sure she got help from her secret cabal of anonymous. Yes, anonymous. <laughs> and did that what it did at that way. Uh laws and laws and signing people to do illegal stuff, you heard it boys. No, 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 no. No, 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 I am not I am not inciting chat to learn how to do very basic uh gray hat methods for purely for pen testing to teach them give themselves education on how they can prevent themselves from being the victims of a cyber crime. I am totally not doing that. Uh but I have to know what kind of sandwich he's eating. <laughs> Steel, have you have you also read um have you also read a uh, girl with a dragon tattoo? But yes, for some reason, <laughs> a girl with dragon tattoo series seems to put a lot of emphasis on what kind of sandwiches uh, Mikhail Blomfus was having to the point where over the course of reading his books, I too started to desire uh, ham and cheese sandwiches. <laughs> uh, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, um, I I went off on a thing about this. So yeah, they also have their own voice, which even though they are very dry, the later books were not as dry. And I will not, I will not recognize the books that came after the came the books that came after, uh, the girl who kicked the hornet's nest as Steve Larson books because they're written by a completely different author. Even though there was actually a fourth book penned by Steve Larson himself. I refuse to recognize it. It's just dumb fan fiction. Um, should probably write the creative writing tags on here, shouldn't I? Um, and remove some of these tags and put in their creative writing. So let me do that really quick. We're going to remove uh, Danger You and Meme Lord and Chaotic Mutual and Reef. No, we're going to and uh, we're going to remove them mid. Remove Danger You for now. We're going to put here. Uh, creative writing. But then we remove Kiag Neutral with writing, and we're going to remove Meme Lord with a uh, workshop. I'm going to put that, we're going to push done. So my tags have been updated. We'll see if we'll attract any more people here who would like to be part of a writing workshop, a very scuffed writing workshop today. So um, when I was when I had got some feedback regarding the writing of my of a science fiction military novel, I was uh called scrap called scrap your dogs. Um, I was drawing heavy inspiration from other forms of military science fiction I have written, uh, that I have read, not written, read, read. Such as the works for in the forty forty k uh forty k series, um the Kai Fiskin novels, and for the my readers they themselves had not re indulged in much science fiction, much less military sci fi. So to them it was very fresh. They had never read a voice like this before. Um, I was afraid that some of the military lingo and all of it was made up military lingo. There's no such thing as BAVs in real life. What we have instead are LAAVs, which I think stands for Lightly Armored Amphibious Vehicle, I think. I could be wrong. But these are actually mechas, and I was calling them BAVs to stand for Bipedal Armored Vehicles. <laughs> I don't care if you wrote the first draft of a girl in the spider's rib, it's no good. Wait, Stieg Larson didn't write the first draft of a girl in the spider's rib, I don't think. My understanding was that the new writer threw out all of Stieg's work and just made up his own bullshit entirely. And he actually wrote another novel that took place after a Spider's Web, which was complete fan fiction and had this whole weird thing where it, it made this stupid shit about how apparently Lisbeth Sounder named herself Wasp because she named herself after a Marvel character. And it's just like, no. And if that was the case, why didn't she bring that up in an earlier book when we were first introduced to her handle as Wasp? 
and just sort of stupid thing where she was becoming to be less and less relevant in the story, even though in the first three books, Elizabeth Salander was like half of the story, even though most people read the books for Elizabeth Salander. <laughs> no one cared about Mikhail Blanc for so much. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that's why I refuse to read the books after a girl, like, girl who kicked the hornet's nest, because it's just, it's not good. I don't want to read fan fiction. I'm sorry. That's, I don't want to read dumb fan fiction. I really wish we could read the original fourth book by Steak himself, but the, um, I'm just going to call her a widower, because even though they weren't actually married, she was effectively a widow, not a widower, she was effectively Steak Larson's widow. She lost control of all the, of all the control of all the books, and the uh, family of Larson's estate, uh, who own Larson's estate, um, are just basically milking his work, and that's very depressing. It's very sad. It probably is a, It's probably kind of a cruel set irony that those books, the books that came after *A Girl with a Hornet's Nest*, did not command very good reviews because that's what happens when you have someone take over your work. That's not you, and who does not use the original manuscripts, right? I should watch the Swedish movies. They're extra great. They're a uh, uh, mil. They're um, they're milli emotes. They are, they are milli two good job emote. Thumbs up. I will. I actually do have copies of the uh, Swedish version. I believe. I think I got them used at some point. So I think I will. My. I think they are also uncensored because. Their standards for movie censorship in Sweden is far lower than it is over here in the States. So I should totally check them out. Um, I think also, I'm not sure which movie's version of Lisbeth I liked better. I think the, I think Rooney Mara, who was the one for the Hollywood version, was fairly good as well. And of course, I'm also a huge fan of, um, Fuck, what's his name? The previous, the most, the most, the, the previous James Bond, uh, Daniel Craig. I really liked Daniel Craig's depiction of, of, uh, Steve, uh, Steve Larson. And, um, you know what? I'll go ahead and admit this too. And one, one of my main character, one of my characters for my science fiction novel series, uh, Fade Out. Their name is Klaus Steak. They're a, they're of German origin, although in the, universe of my science fiction book they come from the nordian federation which is a loosely aligned uh group of nordic and germanic cultures space germanic space cultures um some people have jokingly referred to them as space vikings in my story uh, space vikings is a little bit simplistic they're basically just the germanic and nordic speaking cultures in that take that exists in that universe i named him klaus Stieg. And he, in many ways, is heavily inspired by Stieg Larsson himself and also by the character Mikhail Blankfist. Although, instead of a journalist, he is just straight up a mercenary and former soldier who is similarly estranged from his children and family and is definitely what I would consider chaotic or at least all lawful neutral. Thank you for the head pats. <laughs> um, so that's totally an XP there. Uh, because I was reading those books around a time period of of writing my initial draft of Fade Out, which was back in 2012, 10 years ago. It's going to be 10 years to this November will be 10 years to the day that I wrote my first science fiction novel. Um, I'm planning on I'm planning on participating in NaNoWriMo this year as well, and I decided that I'm going to try and rewrite my original science fiction novel from back then. Because trying to finish what I wrote back then, it's just not going to work out. I'm a completely different person mentally and emotionally from what I was from when I wrote that in 2012. And um, if I try to do any more edits to it, it's just going to be a completely different story. So, And also, I've been growing the universe with it, of Fade Out in the, over this pan past 10 years. And the universe is grown way beyond the original science fiction novel. So I'll need to rewrite the story anyway within... The framework of what I know now, of the kind of person I am now today, and incidentally, 
I'm surprised no one has asked about the strange font that I use for my layout screens. Uh, the fonts that are in these vaguely readable uh, strange text, the things like this uh, here at the bottom of that says of uh, that shows my recent subscriber and recent follower or showcasing in my just cat chatting streams. These things are actually called known as basic. This is a writing system developed specifically for the universe of my science fiction novels, Fade Out. They were developed by the by my close and real life friend Kilo, or also in, also known as Blitzkrieg. He he created this as an original font for the world of Fade Out. He and uh I'm still using it today, basically. <laughs> Woo! Oh man, when I talk a lot, I start to get lightheaded. Give me a second, chat. I I need I need another hydrate redeem. <laughs> I'm starting to my the blood is all leaving my head. I my hands are like getting numb and stuff. Thank you for the three hydrate redeems, Lenarth. I will need them. Considering that we're only it's only been an hour and a half. Woo! And I I have a tendency to just go off of tangents. You know, I've been told many times I should be a teacher, but I feel like if I tried to be a teacher and didn't set up an outline or something, I would just do this. I would just ramble, 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 ramble. Which is funny because a lot of my English professors in college did the same thing. They would just Go off on tangents and ramble, 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 ramble. So I would like to take some time here before we continue uh, reviewing the podcast I had with Christian. Do you, any of you have any questions about anything I've discussed? My writing process, my science fiction work, uh, my how I, the books I've read over the years, anything, anything at all. This is also an excuse for me to catch my breath. And to take a break. Fuck, and now I have hiccups. <gasps> I have hiccups. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm saying. <sighs> if no one has any questions, we're just going to go back into uh, watching through the podcast I had with Christian so I could continue to write notes. Have you completed scrap stories you put a lot of time into? Yes, actually, I have done so on uh, two or three occasions now. These are mostly huge projects that I did back when I was in high school. One of them was my first attempt at a major writing collab that had a good, um, what, dozen or so people in. It was called a, I called it a multi-writing story project. It was a fantasy story, which, a fantasy story, which took place... Um, Basically, it was, well, no, actually, make that three. One of the earliest stories, major stories that I scrapped was based, which I started off in high school, was based off of shonen anime. Um, it involved a kind of a school full of, a school for misfits that was full of lots of many people that had a lot of strange reality warping powers. Pretty much, it was kind of like a... Kind of like an X, kind of like X Men. Um, at the time, it basically collected. I basically went through a lot of friends and a lot of classmates and showed them this whole project I was working on. And I was asking them if they would like to create a character for it that also had these crazy powers and stuff. And I collected a lot of crazy ideas for it. It didn't really have much of a point. It was kind of a combination wacky slice of slice of life, but also bizarro fiction. Um, that was based heavily around anime tropes, especially shonen pro tag tropes. Um, almost everyone in the story was Gary Stu, and 
part of the reason they were almost all Gary's twos was because I went to an all male uh, high school when I when high, was in high school. So pretty much all my friends at the time, most of my friends at the time were all male. Even though the school itself was a co ed. And <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm kind of reluctant to even talk about what the characters and plots were about because. I'm I'm glad I'm cringing internally right now. <laughs> thinking about my thinking about my preach. <laughs> oh my god, it it was so fucking cringy. It was so fucking cringy. <laughs> but um They were all XPs of like popular shonen anime we watched as a kid. Uh, my head pads. All right, thank you for the head pads. Uh, my last class was full of dudes as well. So, um, give me a second. Give me a second. I, I'm getting really numb again. <laughs> breathe in. Breathe in. Breathe out. Ironically. I can't remember any characters that I wrote for it. But I remember the characters that other people wrote for it. I distinctly remember one of the craziest characters was uh, one of my close friends at the time. Uh, he had this character concept where his character would be this... Um, I think it was based off of his handle at the time that he used for Steam and he used for like Discord and stuff. Wait, no. No, 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 no. Discord didn't exist yet. That he used for Steam and that he used for AOL Instant Messenger. Yeah, that's right. We're kicking it really old school. They were called like Dark Evil Mage or something. So he created the character that was a Dark Evil Mage who didn't actually have any magical powers and who used a giant key, <laughs> a giant flaming key. <laughs> the fucking cringe. The, the cringe. The cringe is, start, is starting to choke. <laughs> And a flaming, key. and he flew around as the school on this uh on this um on this uh on this a uh, pet on this um which I call it on his zip line which att which is attached to the ceiling of the school. And he flew around the school like that. He was scared the shit out of people, and I distinctly remember a scene we were talking about where another friend of ours who was like this uh, who was actually a super who was actually like a MI6 agent with a dark brooding backstory who was like investigating this school for like paranormal activity or some shit uh would like pop into would pop in and like shoot out the um the zip line that the uh dark evil mage character was flying in on which would cause them ironically to fly because they were in free fall and I don't remember if they like attacked someone in that process or something. It was really it was really fucking stupid. <laughs> I, I can't I can't stop. AOL, good gosh, yes. Yes. Back in my day, we didn't have no fancy discords. Facebook was still new and was still hip and was still used by high schoolers, even though it was originally marketed to college students. Um we used all kinds of instant messengers back then. AOL, Trillion, Fiji, or was it Pigeon? Uh, MSN, uh, Skype. There used to be programs that would allow you to log into multiple services at once and use multiple services at the same time. I even have old ancient ass screenshots from my college days that had that still had pictures of this program these things don't exist anymore of course because who the fuck uses anything besides discord and facebook and i guess some people still use skype and you know all this stuff all this stuff that like harvests the shit out of your data um back in my day <laughs> lenorth you know what trillion is <laughs> i don't know what the fuck trillion is do any of you know what icq is icq is also a very very uh obscure instant messenger that people use at the time so anyway, yeah, there's a very cringy uh, multi-story writer project, which we put so much effort into, was eventually abandoned. 
even older than that, even older, back when I, we used to use forums, back when I was a kid kid, an actual child, basically nothing but co binary code, just ones and zeros. I wrote a fanfiction once of Cardcaptor Sakura. It took place in this alternate fantasy world. Where everyone, where all the all the different races were divided by hair color, except everyone's hair color was one of the primary colors. There were people with red hair, people with blue hair, people with yellow hair, not blonde hair, yellow hair, and green color hair. Right, 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 right. And I got the stupid idea from because in Card Cap Secure, some of the characters also had colored hair at the time. Totally sapphic panic. Do we have a hurricane right here? The windlash is getting me already. <laughs> uh, sorry, um, there is no hurricane in my room. Uh, although I do have the fan running, and I don't think the fan should the uh sound from the fan should be running because I got noise gate going on. It's probably for me talking so fucking fast right now. Um, I have a t I tend to have a tendency to talk really fast when I'm super excited. Uh, by all means, please let me know if I'm talking too fast. Um, I will attempt to slow down, and I probably have to slow down for my own health. Because the faster I talk, the more blood, or the more, not blood, the more processing power I use. The more processing power I use, the less resources there are to control my brain. And the less I control my brain, the more I tend to do stupid shit and or just... Excuse me. Um, I, I had to. Uh, I got a sick fault there. I had to. I had to. Uh, <clears throat> to shut down and restart for for a good minute, for a good second there. Anyway, uh, totally sapphic panic. Welcome to the stream. My name is Lawler Hicks. You're you're a local shit poster AI and sometimes creative writer. How are you doing today? It's a lovely Saturday morning over here. I hope it's a lovely Saturday wherever you are at. Um, I have not heard the term hurricane writer. No. Uh, the two writer terms that I'm aware of, that I am familiar with are seats of seat of your pants writer and also the uh, planner. Please uh, educate myself and also educate chat on what a hurricane writer is. <laughs> <laughs> Do I presume to guess that a hurricane writer somehow refers to the tendency to just sort of? <laughs> I should probably also take this time to uh, shill my YouTube account because yes, I do have a YouTube chat. Even though you mostly use this for uploading VODs in the future, I hope to upload shorts and I'll be uploading podcasts that I do on occasion. Basically, a hurricane writer tends to have multiple projects going and constantly fluttering between them. Also, a tendency to work obsessively. I wish I could work obsessively like I used to do when I was a younger program. Unfortunately, life is a fuck, and I rarely find time to do to commit to anything. So lately, I've been committing all my excess process power to VTubing in general. And when I first started, I wanted to really integrate creative writing into my brand. And I felt bad because it's kind of fallen to the wayside a little bit. So, and usually... I I host a art stream after my fighting game tournaments on Friday so that I don't need to so I can take some time off of fighting games, do something that's far less stressful. And I thought, eh, I haven't done writing in a while. Oh my god. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the Lost Time Show with your host, the sh actual ship poster Lolo Hicks. You're now officially a lolly. <laughs> One second, Chad. Um there's some A pressure bill of my left ear is starting to drive me nuts. Anyway, um, anyway, so I really need to consider just maybe getting a new set of headsets or something or finding another solution for this so that I don't go nuts from the 
differential in the audio in my left and right ears. I know there's no audio difference. I think there's just something wrong in my left ear. Probably all in my head or probably just a science infection or something. But anyway, where was I? Oh. Well, hi, I'm a writer, artist, dancer, musician, multidisciplined vocalist, rollerblader, and crafter. Crafter soloist? Wow. A jack of all trades. A jack of their own heart. <laughs> Are you also a VTuber or a streamer? Um, or just uh, someone that is an enthusiast of all things art? I'm very, I'm actually very, um, I'm very impressed, very envious. There are a lot of, of those things. I attempt, to, I attempt to do writing art, a little bit of dancing on the side. I would like to get into music. Um, that's kind of been put on ice for the time being. I cannot rollerblade to save my life. I cannot sing to save my life, unfortunately, as Chad has found out the hard way. Um, I used to make stuff with my hands. I haven't done something like that in a while either. You are a streamer, but not a VTuber. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I'm cool. Thank you very much for finding the stream. And I'm glad we have some things in common. You're primarily a visual art, and your and your visual art is spray painting. Oh. Do you tell spray painting art is very is very fun to watch, very entertaining to see the creation of. Especially like the ones that involve like the ones that one guy does with the, like the planets and like the uh wheel with like the um the buckets and stuff. You I misread that. You're not uh to, to do visual art is not your prime. My primary visual art is spray painting. Okay, my bad, my bad. <laughs> I read that as my primary art or art, art is visual. So your primary your primary art is What's your primary art? <laughs> my hands are really numb right now, aren't they? <laughs> Oh, creative writing is your primary art? Primary art form? Very cool. Been doing it the longest. That makes sense. <laughs> Same thing over here. Out of all the things, oh, for all the hobbies I've ever gotten into, I believe writing is the one that I've stayed longest with and the most consistently with. Or attempted to, anyway. The one you do the most of is actually flow art. Is flow art. I see, I see. My next question is, uh, how did you find the Lost Time Show? Did you see a Twitter post? Did you see a link on Discord? Or was the algorithm of tw did you get sent here in your record by Twitch? So I noticed that Twitch algorithm has been very good to me lately for whatever reason. It must be this new a uh, custom tag system they got going on here. I wonder. Hmm. Okay. Object manipulation in a free form format with the intent of attaining a meditative flow state. Object manipulation in a free form format with the intent of obtaining a meditative flow state. That's very interesting. I don't think I've ever heard of this before. So it's a form of meditation, hula hooping, staff spinning, toy juggling, etc. Ah, very good. Very fun. Very fun. <laughs> Very fun indeed. Do you use a steel great mace? Like a legit great mace or one you've created? Like, did you craft a great mace it yourself or is it a prop or is it like a, is it a battle ready great mace or is it? I mean, I have nothing against great maces as someone who is also a, who is also a fan of HEMA, historical European martial arts. I'm just, that's just the first I've heard of someone using a steel great mace as part of flow art. 
You found me via the writing tag. Uh, there you see, there you see, have a chat. Pro absolute proof that Twitch tags do in fact work and anyone that tells you otherwise, I wouldn't say that they're lying because why would you lie about something like that? I would say that they probably not try it themselves or they don't have examples of people that have found themselves using the tags. But these tags do in fact work. So that's why you should totally make use of them. <laughs> it's 24 kilograms, 52 pounds training mace. That'll work. <laughs> it must be pretty well balanced to, to be able to use it for flow art. Not at all. It's not balanced at all. So you basically use it in spite of the imbalance in the uh in the in the device? In the tool, I should say. We should play some music in the background. The question is should I play? Twenty kilograms in the head, four in the shaft. You have to use a different motion. Oh, I see. I see. More swinging and such, a little spinning, some punching. Ah, I see, I see. I know that there is no difference in the left hand sides of my ear, and yet I am compelled to f f change auto balance as if there is a difference in the left and right sides of me. Very strange. Hopefully I'll get over it. All right. You've hit yourself more than a few times, so I'm sorry to hear that. At least you I hope you haven't injured yourself too poorly. Uh, Lenarth, you know you can always remove one ear of your headset if it's too troubling? Um... It's not that, it's, um... I wish that... I kind of, it makes me want to change the balance so that there's it, the volume is louder in my left ear but that's only a band-aid solution it's i'm trying to power through it on the assumption that it's a mental thing that's happening instead of an actual thing that's occurring but honestly now i'm not entirely sure if that's really the case the worst you had was a rapid slap of the handing against your jaw. Ow! Woo! On TikTok, no less, huh? What I should probably do is, in addition to going to a doctor to get my ears checked, I should have them check to see if there's anything actually wrong with me. There probably isn't. But it's been a while since I've been to a doctor anyway.
You know what? I think the headset is the problem. When I replace, when I when I move them backwards, put the left and the right and the right and the left. to test it with some other headsets later i guess anyway let's go ahead and get back to what we were originally doing since i've calmed down my hands are not shaky as much anymore for those of you just coming in we were going through and reviewing a podcast i had with a different vtuber named christian vt um i still need to write some vtuber lore for them and i was hoping to get that done today you know up until i went into a huge tangent about my own creative works we're going to continue listening to re-listening to this podcast and putting down some notes and then hopefully getting some writing done of his story. I recently accidentally did a DIY to my old boots. Did not think it through and now I can't rate them into most shops. Oh, that sucks. Why can't you bring them to a shop though? mention knives well when people say knives and dark brooding backstory and a warrior type thing there's a certain kind of there's a certain kind of trope or cliche that people immediately start thinking of and it doesn't need to necessarily be like that um for example see right now listening to myself talk here on my youtube video it sounds balanced uh there's a character in arknights named gravel who is Supposed to be a knight, but they use daggers. So you think, think that they're actually more of a roguish character, and they are, but that's not really what they are in the lore. It's not the same thing. They just it's just a stereotype that people get from the certain weapons that they use because the way most media today is structured, we're kind of um, predisposed to thinking that oh, just because someone uses knives, they must be an assassin kind of person, and that's not necessarily the case. It might be a three-inch um, sharp um, lag screw. That's also why I'm trying to build up. Would you like? Trying to pull out. Uh, why are you putting? Why did you put screws in your shoes? Which totally rhymes. <laughs> uh, the idea, an idea of who or what this character is. So, um, back onto what we were just discussing. Um, like I mentioned, I asked if this uh, was a kind of. Uh, job class a kind of occupation that i totally forgot that i had the speed set up to 1.3 which, which lends me to be curious about what why did they start to resent their job was there was was there hey cosmic happiness welcome to the stream we're going pretty well uh just reviewing some just a right hopefully getting to writing some vtuber lore soon um, just reviewing a podcast I had with the VTuber in question, Christian VT, who I'm going to go ahead and um, actually shout out over here really quick. I think that's his handle, right? Let's check really quick. That is not his current handle. Hmm. Let me go find his current handle. One second. Ah. His handle has been changed to Christian3. Okay. So it should be shout out Chris Chin three is the person who for whom I'm writing VTuber lore and with whom I had this podcast. 
He is a pro FPS player, although lately he's been taking a break from FPS games and has been playing a bit of Minecraft, it looks like here. Or I could be wrong, it appears that he's gone back into Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which was his original uh, main game and professional esports game back when he was an LNG player. He did play Halo Infinite for a while, but as some of you may or may not know, Halo Infinite has gone along the wayside. Bungie, or not Bungie, uh, uh, 343, not exactly doing the best, uh, best job with it right now. <laughs> So I don't blame him for trying out, branching out to other games at the moment. He is a jungle elf. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're uh, reviewing a podcast I did with Christian a few months ago. Um, I do am writing VTuber lore for him, or I'm spo or I'm trying to find making making time to because I think life has been quite busy lately. Um. Totally sapphic panic because it looks cool. You know what? Fair enough. As someone who also does a lot of crazy shit for because it looks cool, I cannot argue with that logic. Although, I'm surprised that people are telling you that you can't bring them into most shops. That people will actually look down and be like, mm -mm, I, we don't like the fact that your shoes have screws in them. <laughs> that seems like a very odd thing for anyone to get to uh, prevent you from entering for. But I guess there are some people that are kind of like, are kind of kind of that uh, strict about clothing items. Most people over here, they just follow the whole no shoes, no shirt, no service rule, as opposed to that. And uh, chat, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not going to risk it. You know what, fair enough. Best to uh, walk lightly, so to speak, when entering a place, a public place. Now, chat, I will take a short break to use the restroom. I'll be back in around two minutes. So give me just a second. Oop.
I am back, chat. Sorry for the wait. I've also learned a few things when I was taking my break. For one, definitely nothing. There's definitely... I don't think there is anything wrong with my left ear. I think there must be either something wrong with my headset or my audio settings. At this point, I'm starting to think that maybe my headset's starting to die a lot sooner than I was hoping it would. Just because... It is... Headsets do tend to die depending on build quality and their usage. Be very unfortunate that was what's happening to this now since I don't really feel like purchasing another $99 headset uh, in that price or a similar one in that price range, but it is what it is. And secondly, um, I've been informed that there's a possibility that I should probably take deep breaths while speaking to prevent more strange numbness from occurring. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and jump right back into what we were doing prior to the break. Just making sure my V2 model is set properly. We are going to continue listening to this podcast between myself and Christian VT. We're going to see if we can get some writing done for the next uh, hour or so. Someone, Someone that made that change that uh, changed change the perspective of things. Did they just genuinely find it distasteful and felt like they were pressured into doing it because that's how their culture is structured, um, like that sort of thing? Nature versus nurture, that good, that kind of good stuff. Yeah. Uh, well, I think. Well, I would say that they actually like live live there. They they work there. They was their life and. Somebody showed them another way, maybe a target. Somebody then was bad for the for the how to say it for for the tribe. Uh, like was, bad he, for he the society, bad for the, bad for the government. Or? Uh, bad for the for for the, the tribe. They, they, they was, it was a target they, they was given by the tribe. But that target make made him uh, realize, oh, wait, why why we're doing this? Mm, I see. Um, and why would this particular target be any different from any other target they've had before? Mm, that's that's what I don't, I don't know. Hmm. All right, let's hold on to that train of thought then, and let's go in a slightly different direction. Uh, this is gonna sound very. This is gonna sound like something out of a stupid sitcom or something. But uh, tell me about their parents. <laughs> And there is a reason why actual therapists, believe it or not, and such what what not actually do ask about people's family, because yeah. Oh yeah, I believe that's that's me. I'm trying to think. I mean, we like we can go for the trope of the classic. Oh yeah, the mom was a uh, normal elf <laughs> wife and then normal mom. Another, another warrior, and that's that was what it, it. That's why the they were a part of the same like a warrior class of, of the of the society and that's why he was a warrior himself. I see, I see. So following in the family footsteps of the father was also a warrior, so they too will be a warrior, huh? Now were they doing this of their own free will or were they um, pushed into doing it by their father or family or was it required by the government like some sort some sort of conscription or I may have an idea about that. Oh really? Do tell. Do tell. No uh, of, about the father. Well, the the, 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 the the parents. Okay. Because the the parents are well, the mother was a really good cook. Ooh. He always, Mom he was a cook. He learned that, but uh, his father, being then my car my uh, character was an only child, he was like, no, you need to fight, no, no time for cooking. Very interesting. So, uh, classic, actually, uh, as someone who is. A, as someone who grew, or as someone who is of Asian descent, I unfortunately am all too familiar with this concept. Um, so he kind of, he kind of uh, had more in common, at least um, interest-wise, with his mother than his father. But his father wanted to uh, convince him to basically, to or felt that he should instead focus more on, should be, uh, should go into the field like he did himself. Okay. Yeah. Now. Did this did lead this to any conflict within the family? Like, 
was how did the does his, his it's clear from the way he described it that his father was well aware of the father was quite aware of his son's desires and clearly found them distasteful or at the very least disproved of them uh, how did the mother feel about this well i think that the mother classically was like don't don't be harsh with the kids but uh, but kids don't don't make angry don't make your dad angry i see so kind of milk toast then um it's more of like um very traditional uh sort of thing so does this lead me to believe that christian young christian did not learn cooking from his mother or did he just happen um or did she teach him in secret or did basically um she, she did teach him but but when he wasn't fighting you know I see. Okay, so it's not like a case of dad was physically preventing him from doing cooking. It was just more of a matter of he could not do this as a profession, as opposed to he could not do it at all, sort of thing. Yeah, he he couldn't like put it in the in the fierce, like in fierce way instead of fighting. I see. I see. And and okay, another idea. The the dad kinda accepted the idea of he learning to cook. That's why he learned to cook. But he needed to train that double double the time. Ah, that's very interesting, actually. So, the father did not mind so much that his son was interested in cooking, but he wanted him to, but he had to make up for it by training harder as a warrior. Okay, okay, that's actually kind of unique. Um, usually in stories like this, uh, it's a very uh, hard. It's a very. It's not nuanced. Usually, it's not as nuanced. Um, usually, it's one side of the family is super anti what their child wants, and they're like violently anti such and such. But this is different. This makes a lot more sense, actually. This also yep. leads me. Oh, sorry. Go on. No, yeah, yeah. I was, I was agree. This is where we start going into where I was talking about earlier in the stream about there are no really tr truly original concepts. There are just interesting spins and interesting interpretations of concepts. Um, already here, as you could tell from the, the notes I've been taking on my own podcast, it's sort of very simple, very traditional, very um expected, very almost stereotypical. Uh, story of this elven warrior and we're already moving into something that is considerably not traditional in storytelling um usually there's not as much nuance depicted when it comes to these type of stories it's pretty cut and dry um cut and dry the societal and familial expectations as compared to the child's individual wants and feelings and unfortunately i typically find that this is art imitating reality imitating life there aren't that many i feel like especially in asian cultures from personal experience um typically there is not much of a if this then this um i must i myself was told that it's okay if i want to do art however it will never be a career for me. It must always be something that I do on the side as a hobby. They didn't. So they didn't tell me so much that, oh, if you want to do this, you must do this. They're telling them, oh, you can do that when you have time. Um, there are some families that are unfortunately far more harsh than that. They will be disdainful, flat out disdainful of their children pursuing something that their parents do not perceive to be useful. Um, but do do not perceive to be useful. Um, I don't think that people are nearly as strict about that sort of thing nowadays, just because we live, I like to believe that we are in a far more understanding society or in a society that um, is a lot less brutal than the ones that our parents grew up in, such that we can even afford to entertain um, hobbies and concepts and career paths that are not traditional that are not that were not historically um very good at putting food on the table some would say that they're still not very good at putting food on the table but they're a lot better than they used to be with food damn sure um definitely in today's day and age it's a lot easier to get self-paid work and to promote yourself and to uh get work outside you don't necessarily need to you don't need to go under an apprentice anymore you don't need to necessarily find be hired we have the introduction of things like patreon things like kofi things like well any service you could think of that allows you to sell your services online and to be paid for it online has greatly simplified and made easier this process even if it is a pain in the ass still to market yourself I mean, as anyone who has used Twitter or 
other social media as a, and try to get their name out there to get to work will understand it still kind of a pain but it is some money as compared to seemingly no money at all um yeah <laughs> Oh, I was just going to say that this leads me to believe or to assume that the his relations with his family was not really strained or at least not as strange as, strained as it could have been. Is that correct? Yeah, it, it wasn't as bad. I'm straying estranged here as in, you know, separated, hostile, that sort of thing. But it was, it was like, yeah, it's okay. It's not like the ideal family, but of course it, it, it wasn't uh, crimes and stuff. Okay, so it wasn't basically... <laughs> Alright, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah it wasn't abusive. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good way to put it, actually. Alright. All right. Hmm. Hmm. This is actually all very good. All so as you can already see, you already are creating, are creating organically, organically a lot of more backstory, of backstory for your character. For your I'm not sure how much of this you thought of before today's tonight's session, session, but this is good. This, this is, is good. progress. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so naturally, so naturally, now that we've pretty much gone into his family life, discovered, determined that his family, while not super supportive of his interests and hobbies, were not uh, necessarily against them at all, to the point where he they even taught him how to do both, which is very interesting. So that leads me to wonder, what happened? Yeah, what happened? I mean, he could go anywhere with this. Like, I mean, I mentioned earlier that I made an assumption earlier in today in the, in the conversation where I thought that. He's already been through so many secret raids in Al Qaeda, over 300 confirmed kills, <laughs> um, prior to this one person that he decides that he doesn't want to kill. Um, this is part of the reason why I made the assumption was because of how he started off. He just said we were discussing a dark backstory, a sort of um, tragedy befalling him that caused him in this path of darkness. He was basically going Batman, and we have gone completely from that towards something more balanced and nuanced. This is not no longer the Batman, the Bat Christian, the Bat Elf. Um, this is someone that's in many ways had an upbringing that many people can relate to in the real world. They are not particularly rich. They were not particularly. They did not have particularly tragic backstory. They still have both parents. The parents were not abusive. They were just strict and or traditional. They also seem very understanding. I mean, just the fact that the father was willing to overlook their son being a cook as opposed to a warrior as long as they were capable of doing both says a lot. You don't often see that much compromise in a lot of these stories, so this is actually kind of refreshing. Lunala, long time no see. How you been? Welcome to the stream. Glad to see it. Glad to see you today. You're just in time. We are just uh, re watching a podcast I had with Christian VT back in May. I have been looking for an excuse to work on, to find time to work on the VT Valor, and that is what we are doing today or attempting to. I unfortunately do have a lot of plans for this weekend. So, unfortunately, we will be ending at exactly at 11 a.m. my time, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, which is in about 40 minutes from now. But we'll probably continue this next Saturday. I do want to get this street, get this done, you know. Uh, Luna, I've been doing good, just been busy. I see. I see. So, same as me, then. Well, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come visit. I really appreciate that. Not a Not uncommon a trope, trope in media. media. However, However, there is a very common, very common criticism of this trope in media that people have, and that's the whole, how is it that you go through all of this becoming super desynthesized and you just so happen to decide, no, not this one? Because, unfortunately, this is a case where fiction does not emulate reality. In reality, people who do this for a living get very desynthesized, and unfortunately, this means that it's un very unlikely that they would just happen to decide, no, I'm not going to kill this particular person for whatever reason, unless there is a very good reason for doing for not doing so, and um, the most common pe one that people say is that, oh, it's a child, or oh, it's a loved one, but even then, it's it's very difficult. So when you when you desensitize yourself to violence, um, most of the time, you're not going to even think about it, because people quickly learn that the qu first thing you learn when you become a killer, and I'm not, I don't do this, I'm not this occupation in real life, uh, um, the first thing you learn when you become a soldier, or work for a PMC is, 
to not think of your target as human, you have to reduce them into an op Now, I would like to clarify, this is purely my opinion, based off of what I've gleaned from talking with actual soldiers, people that were in, that pr in similar professions, even police officers are intentionally trained to desensitize themselves so that they do not allow their personal feelings to get in the way of their job. It doesn't matter, it's not supposed to matter your age, your sex, your gender, your race. You're supposed to do what you're paid to do regardless. And frankly, when you watch soldiers, when you see them doing what they do overseas, this they struggle with this all the time. Like, I remember seeing videos of people operating UAVs where they'll shoot a target and some of them would look after the fact and be like, wait, that didn't look like an adult. And then you'll hear their handler in the background or hear them be like, oh, it's just a dog. Or, oh, don't worry about it. Oh, you got them. You got the terrorist. Sometimes, a lot of times, they will just push it to the back of their head and not think about it so they don't have to suffer from... The PTSD of being like, oh my god, I've done something terrible. Sometimes they can't. Sometimes they'll dwell on it and it'll stay with them for the rest of their life. Because you can only do so much, you know. But you cannot count on this trope to work in real life. You cannot... If you're in a situation like this, do not count on the person's better judgment... You get in the way to suddenly activate just because of gender roles or age or little things or even even having a pet. If they're already out there doing something violent, they're already kind of past that point in their life. Once again, still my opinion, but as far as I can tell from what I understand about human nature. And of course, being an AI artificial intelligence. My study, my study of human nature is ever is ever continuing, ever growing. Object, an object that you will not mind eliminating. That's why it's very difficult. So, um, I made some assumptions that Christian has gone through many of these already, but I could be wrong. Did he go through many of these already, or was this his first target, or was it, or was we, was he doing this thing for only a relatively short time before he decided to stop? No, he no, he became he quite quite a good warrior. I mean, that's where the ability with the what with the knight went. Well, okay. Fear, okay, more, fear, more likely. Okay, so okay, so he's done this for a while, and he was very good at it up, up until up until the, the event. But yeah, how do we yeah. justify the event? Hmm. Well, it's not necessarily just justifying. justifying um, um, there's a lot of things even in real life that aren't necessarily justified. Uh, but then again, the concept of justification is pure opinion, purely subjective. Instead, let's look more towards... I mean, even the concept of like cause and effect is kind of fucky-wucky. There are a lot of things that you can't really trace how or why they occur. They just sort of do, and sometimes it's really a matter of random chance. Uh, I don't personally completely believe in the butterfly effect. I think the butterfly effect sometimes is really is really subject to chaos theory, to just shit that you really can't predict, thermodynamic miracles and the like. So no need to lock ourselves under a concept, under the uh, illusion of control, or illusion of, oh, what in his background could possibly have led to this one moment. Um, you're really open to deciding whatever it could have been. It could have been a passing thought process. It could have been that he was having a bad day and decided he was tired of this shit. It could have been the auspices were not right, or maybe someone had intervened without realizing they were intervening. It could be anything, really. For, for example, um, uh, I'll give, I'll use the American, I'll use the, um, I'll use some, a couple of real world governments as examples. The FBI here in the states, Federal Bureau of Investigations, is actually a, is actually more of a policing branch. They don't carry out assassinations and the like. They're more they're more so concerned with um, basically national security. But they get confused a lot for the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, whose job is, which is not a government organization, which sounds weird, right, even though we have elected officials for that. It's actually a civilian organization, but part of what they do does involve um, uh, troubleshooting or international uh, situations which have national interest, which have interest to the American government. Say something straight. Hmm. Heterosexual? I don't know what you mean by say something straight. 
Welcome to the stream, by the way. How are you doing today, Tron Panda? That's gay. So what if everything that we say is actually homosexual? Unless you mean gay as in happy, in which case I wouldn't say everything I say is happy, but I do try to make an effort in that in kind of that direction. Okay, well, you're very welcome. I'm not sure what the point of that exercise was, but whatever. Anyway. Um, and the reason I bring this up, bring this up is to also bring up the Russian equivalent, the FSB, the, uh, which people, which is also kind of equivalent to American FBI, except the FSB also kind of uh, functions as a secret police, and they also have a duty. My knowledge of the FSB is actually fairly limited, just based off of stuff that I've read online much of which I'm sure is propaganda, but at the same time, or is maybe a little bit exaggerated. Some of my ideas of what I thought the FSB was is also based off of video games depicting the FSB, in which case they always did seem, everyone likes to say secret police or they're like the new form of the KGB, but the way they're described just sounds like a general intelligence agency. Of some kind, even if they don't typically talk about said duty, um, to silence or to deal with uh, threats to national security. And how this applies, I'm basically asking uh, what kind of targets or what kind of specific organization or or what uh, duties Christian may have had. Um, was he a troubleshooter? Was he or was he like a frontline soldier type person that was like stationed on the borders or and basic or and to jump off that? Uh, what kind of Enemies, what kind of targets did he typically, was he typically presented with? Were they fellow jungle elves? Were they other races? Were they, maybe they weren't even humanoid. Maybe they were just primitive monsters, or maybe they were just mindless monsters, so that sort of thing. Yeah, um, hmm. I, let's, how, how, how do we, again, not justify what we said, but like, like, make it work. Mm. Well, hmm. what was this? What kind of uh, warrior was his father? Well, his, I, I guess that the father wasn't a normal warrior, like a like a front line. And so uh, basically, a soldier kind, per, soldier kind person. Uh, yes. Secure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Hmm. Did Christian have anything like approaching like ranks or whatever, like officership or the equivalent? Or was his were his family nobles in this society, or were they just uh, normal, quote unquote, normal people? In this in this society, I can't speak, but the air is getting to my head. Uh, in this, were they kind of like the equivalent of just uh, a normal family in this society, or noblish, or rich, poor, middle class? I think they they were normal. Yeah, not much like happening with them. They were just they had a work to do. Okay. Interesting. What other races exist in this uh, fantasy world? Well, humans, of course. Okay, humans. Uh, or, I'm sorry, you first. I, I think you can go with the classic ones, to be completely honest. Cause That's fine. Humans That's fine. Have, uh, human elves, uh, etc. Et et so, what are dwarves too? Gnomes, orcs, goblins, kobolds? <laughs> okay, I'm drawing a little. Kobolds are probably a little bit too. are probably a little bit more detailed than that, but. This part's a little bit dry. Yeah, uh, well, brainstorming often is. We can actually do, do the, like using the, the other type of monsters. Like they, they were like protecting the, the village. So they were protecting up. Once again, I do want to try. I do like to try to avoid influence overly influencing the person I'm assisting too much in the kind of story they were trying to tell. At the same time, this kind of run. At the same time, didn't only force people to come up with things on their own so much. It's okay to leave like little breadcrumbs or to like give options. You want to try to be as vague as possible with these options without being too deep, to be not as un as unspecific as possible with these options, but it's not always possible. 
um, you also want to try and pick up on like tropes or like uh, whimsies that they may have and try to stretch them out. Kind of like, um, they'll be like throwing like mothball, they'll be like throwing out uh, yarn balls, right? right? And you basically want to like take, pick up some of these balls of yarn and like pull them apart, see how long they are on the inside. If any of them like fall apart immediately or any of them hold their shape, more or less. A village from Munster. Yeah, they were, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. There was, okay. There was a Kotek in the village of Munster and he was just, just one, of, one of them. So one he of was the Kotek of, of the village. C classics and the, the elves uh, just don't like people don't like being people. Being So they were a monster hunter. Yeah, basically. Hmm. hmm. All right. So they are a monster hunter. Hmm. Curious. Curious. Hmm. You know. You know. Another way to think of this. It doesn't necessarily need to be that they were they got tired of killing this specifically because of a target that they didn't want to kill. It could even just be that they're tired of violence in in in, in all in all, all in like in general, or maybe they've seen too many of their uh, comrades pass away, or the stress was getting to them, and they decided to stop entirely. At the same time, this is also another stereotype that I'm not sure I would have suggest put forward as a suggestion if we were having this conversation today. Just because, been there, seen that a lot, but it's not that bad to just give it as a suggestion to kind of keep the ball rolling. If you let the ball drop a little too much, there's the poss. Sorry for my phone there. If you let the ball drop too much, it cause it kind of just drops the it kind of slows down the, the line of thinking entirely, and it gets very hard to get back on the train, so to speak. So even if it's not necessarily a great idea, just ballpark ballparking ideas, even ones that are stereotypical or too common in tropes, is not that bad. Hey Driz, how are you doing today? Oh, welcome to the stream. Today I'm just doing I'm getting back into creative writing. Uh back in May, I reached a a inter I actually reached a, a certain milestone. So I ran a, a giveaway for writing VT or VTuber lore for a VTuber. Um, I've been rather busy the past few months and I've not done a writing stream in forever. So I attempted to have one today. So we've just been chatting about, uh, doing a lot of just chatting about uh, creative writing, my writing process, um, how to create characters and the like. I did a podcast with a VTuber named Christian back then that I recorded for both to show other people, or both for other people's benefit and also for my own benefits, so that I could go back to it and review it when I do get back to writing his lore. And we're basically going through that today on uh, 1.4 speed because it is an hour and a half long and we are on limited time. It is 10.34 right now and I do have a lot of plans for today, so I'll need to get off at around 11 exact. So we'll probably continue the rest of this project next Saturday, but... um. It's been a while since I've done creative writing or did writing workshops in general, so I am kind of happy to be bringing these back as a slight alternative to strive from time to time. Mm -hmm. How are you doing today, Driz? Yeah, that could be it. Mm. I'm just thinking if that type of trauma, if that type of trauma like affected him, or why he would be keep keep doing the, well, keep, keep uh, trying to do the, all the work with Nigel, but he would just try to run away from that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I think. Also, also, for those of you just coming in, Christian VT the, is a jungle elf VTuber. He is specifically a chef. However, he also comes from a warrior-ish society. Um, so f over the process of speaking with him to develop his character, we have so far determined that even though he comes from a war culture, his parents, while slightly disapproving of his desire to be a chef, uh, allowed him to be a chef so long as he also followed in the traditional masculine urge to be good at weapons. His chosen weapons, of course, are knives, in particular chef knives, I think. I don't know if he specified. He just said knives in general. He's kind of a roguish type character. Um... Originally, we were going for more of a dark, tragic 
brooding backstory a la Batman, minus the obscene wealth. And we, over the course of our conversation, turned it more towards a Monster Hunter vibe. Um, a warrior culture out of necessity as opposed to just raw warrior culture type thing. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for the watching and the lurking. <laughs> I'm glad that you think so. Um, I don't have a lurk bot. I don't have a lurk command set up right now, but thank you so much for the lurk. And if you have any questions so far on our, our questions on the process through which the recreated lore for Christian VT or any questions for me as a writer or just any questions in general, feel, do not hesitate to ask. Um, this is a very free-flowing writing workshop that we have going on. So I'm more in right and it, you'll quickly find out that I like to talk about this subject. So uh, don't be a stranger. So I was thinking, uh, since we're changing a little bit where he's more of a Monster Hunter type character, uh, are these monsters edible? I'm a huge fucking fan of the Dungeon Meshi manga, and also pretty much any cooking manga, and also the fact that there are games like this where you hunt monsters and you turn them into stuff, and not just like weapons and armor, I'm talking like food. I think they do this in Monster Hunter 2, don't they? They actually, you can actually cook monsters in Monster Hunter, right? I, I don't play Monster Hunter. So I'm just talking that on my ass here, but that's the first thing I thought of. Hey, man, what are you going to do about it? I'm going kind of a Dungeon Meshi route, right? Or a Tarika route. Also in the uh, game, was it uh, Battle Chef Brigade for the Nintendo Switch and also for the PC? That's literally this concept. You are a chef. You go out into the wilderness, you hunt and fight monsters, you bring home their body parts, and you cook them, and then you have to participate in a cooking competition. <laughs> Remember, chat, there are no original concepts. There are only original interpretations of those concepts. Yes, or, I was going to get into Dungeon Meshi. There's, believe it or not, um, as someone who reads too many books or too many mangas about cooking and eating foods and eating fictional foods, there's actually quite a few that are about cooking and eating uh, fantasy monsters, believe it or not. There's even a game called, uh, there's even a, a game, I can't remember the name of the game now, where it's a side-scrolling game, you literally... It's Battle Chef Brigade past me, come on, Battle Chef Brigade. You could get it on Steam, it's fairly cheap. You can also get the limited run edition somewhere, sometimes in a Best Buy if they have any in stock. Because that's where Limited Run sent all their extra copies that they didn't sell. This the stream is not sponsored by Limited Run Games, by the way. I just I just happen to know that because I see it on sale all the time. You literally go out. You're a chef. You literally go out to the woods. You kill monsters. You harvest their bodies. Or you harvest their uh, bodies for food stuff, and then you go back to the home base and you literally cook using the ingredients that you just harvested. A uh, battle chef brigade or something. So similar concept. Ha! Ah! Battleship Brigade. In the manga Toriko, there is a there are two concepts, Bishokia and um, whatever the fuck the other name is. Basically, chefs um, team up with. Toriko is another manga and anime that used to run in Shonen Jump. Uh, it's basically Dragon Ball Z, except the world except it takes place in a world where everyone's obsessed with food and all the monsters from Dragon Ball Z are edible. And the whole thing is about a chef and a monster hunter going in wild adventures to. Hunt and cook monsters. I feel like the show and anime are the show, the show and anime, the show and manga are best when they are focusing on the food because it has a lot of stupid power creep that's similar to Dragon Ball Z, where they spend all this time training and learning these stupid moves and having these weird power scalings where they fight against these bad guys and stuff. And more so than Dragon Ball Z, the show, the show and manga really just go all over the place they and i think they i think they do so knowingly they know it's a ridiculous concept it has ridiculous concepts they know it it has no breaks and so they just go all out which you know it makes at times when it does try to be serious kind of stupid because unlike one piece which knows it's dumb fun fun kind of dumb Toriko does try to pull your heartstrings out occasionally, and it does succeed a couple times. There are some things that are quite obviously pacing issues, like are some areas that are kind of rushed. But I would still highly recommend it. It's a very fun series to get into if you turn off your brain. Yep, it is, that's because it is Toriko. 
monster hunters, and those monster hunters go out and collect ingredients, which they then bring back to the chef, who then turns them into delicious food. And Dungeon Meshi, of course, is about um, that one dwarf whose name I forgot, literally cooking and eating, uh, not just a dwarf, but also the knight character whose name I forgot, uh, cooking the monsters that live in the dungeon, because it turns out they're edible, if cooked pro prepared properly. But, um... If we go that route, uh, one has to wonder, once again, did Christian, why did Christian decide to stop doing the hunting portion? Did he become a vegetarian or something? Or did he just get tired of hunting for sport, or hunting for, to defend the village? But even then, um, I guess this also, this is important because it completely changes the, uh, kind of changes the, uh, not just the idea, but it changes the, I guess the, it, it starts, it completely changes things like the, uh, any potential character flaws, um, uh, any potential character struggles, because it's different to, if they're just monsters, unless he, unless the The word that passed me was looking for was motivation. Character motivations are one of the most important things you'll ever have when creating character in, for stories. You could create all the fucking fanciest shit ever for a character. But if you don't get down what their motivations are at all, it's all for naught. If the motivation of the character determines why we, the reader, the viewer, should care about the character. To a lesser extent, it also applies for VTubing. It's not as important for VTubing because a lot of times people, people go to VTubing, watch YouTubes for a lot of reasons. They like their voice, they think they're sexy, they think they're cute, they like the video games that they're covering, they think they're, they're, they think they're funny, they think this, they think that. But I really feel that it can only help add to the immersion, it can only help add to your brand. If you, if you decide to create a VTuber that's based off a character that you've created, an original character, it helps that if you create a motivation for a character, even if you are not 100% Primarily doing stuff related directly to that motivation in the stream. I'll, to give an example with some of my YouTuber friends. You could start really basic with Professor Tetsuo, for example. Is himself a, t is a magical teacher. He is a professor. And just like in his real world occupation as a school teacher. He treats all his streams as classes. When you go to his streams, you're actually sitting down for class and he's going to teach you the lesson of the day. And his primary motivation is basically running a warm, welcoming environment for his students. Professor Cosmo Bergamo is also a magician, is also a magical based professor. However, he runs his classes in a more literal way where when you stop by for one of his classes, more often than not, he actually is teaching the class something. Those are especially on days where he is not necessarily playing or streaming games. Sometimes he will be doing actual like magic or stuff with his hands. He has done things like drawn runes or like creative crafts on stream, on webcam. And sometimes he will actually either teach you something or you'll go on a field trip to a market that exists within a universe of his character as Cosmo Bergamo. And you can actually purchase things that he will use later in a different stream, which is because he likes doing a lot. He like his whole big thing is uh, interacting, interacting with other VTubers and interacting with his followers. He's a very interactive VTuber. So his prime motivation, and he's also in, he's also in character like 90% of the time. It's it's amazing. I'm kind of envious at how in character he is. But um, his prime motivation revolves around being this legit like teacher that you are not only a student in his class, but you actively participate within his classroom environment, within his field trips, within his studies. And when he does collaborations with other VTubers or with chat, you can literally use things that you have learned from previous streams, from previous uh, stories that he has run within a, pre within a future stream. It is one of the most interactive forms of uh, VTubing I've ever seen. Very good, very good stuff. And it creates, a, it, creates, it adds to 
the motivation and the immersion of why he has caused more Bergamo. I've seen this also with another streamer, VTuber named Showbro of the Shadows. He is also another person that's in character like 90% of the time. He regularly creates lore drops on his Twitter page, on his Twitter profile, that require user interaction to even access. And they are very lengthy, lengthy lore pieces, let me tell you. More often than not, you need to provide a bit of yourself to, you need to submit something to the Google Forms that he posts that allow you to actually access the story bits. His motivation behind this is being a sort of shadowy character, kind of mysterious character with a dark past, which sounds pretty basic up until you start having to interact with him to even access these portions. He has a lot of reasons for being mysterious and for being a shadow of his of himself, so to speak. And he has a lot of secrecy that revolves around this sort of self-preservation mechanic. So he has a lot of motive so it so it follows a lot of his motivations for being the way that he is and being the kind of VTuber he is he stems from he's stems from stems from these motivations basically. Here I go again, talking too fast and not getting enough oxygen. <laughs> Or I would actually like to copy some of these concepts for myself in my own streams. For the most part, I've been slowly integrating more and more my second self, the artificial intelligence known as Lawler Hicks, into my mannerisms, my manner of speech, and the way I portray myself both online or online in Twitter and Twitch. And fairly soon, I will be releasing a Tumblr, a new Tumblr account that will have more of my writings that I can showcase that will go into, delve a little bit more into my own VTuber lore and how I came to be, why I'm the person that I am today, etc, etc. Otherwise, I'm fairly relaxed when it comes to mixing between in, or in character and out of character. I would say the best way to tell if I'm speaking in character and out character is my accent and how I refer to myself and basically how demented I sound. There's a reason why I have a tendency to start using uh, a different vocabulary online. I have a tendency to speak more in a southern drawl to start using terms to refer to phonetic pronunciation like ah instead of I. Howdy instead of hello, y'all instead of you all, other things like that. And there are reasons for that, make no mistake. I do tend to speak with a southern accent from time to time, just based on how I was raised and the part of the, part of the country I come from. It's not very heavy though, because a lot of it I have just sort of borrowed from other people. I actually get a lot of different, a lot of people think my, I get a lot People making assumptions, different assumptions about where, what part of the country I'm from. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm glad that you like said style. A lot of it, believe it or not, is unintentional. There have been, I go back in some streams, and there are some streams where it just comes out, where suddenly I start speaking this very heavy accent, and it's not intentional. And it's very cute when some people are like, oh, Lawler is speaking in a strong Midwestern accent, because living here in the Midwest, I was always told that Midwesterners have no accent. But in fact, we do have an accent. It's just not noticeable to anyone except outside the state, right? Whew. Oh man, feeling lightheaded again. It's weird how this happens, because it doesn't happen that much when I'm standing and talking. I think part of it is just a hot room. And not taking deep breaths properly and all that. I hope it's not an indication of a greater problem. I'm not having other, any other symptoms. Still, I should probably get a checkup anyway, just to be sure. Whew.
wonder why it looks like I'm just doing this record when I'm actually sitting back in my chair. How about nine minutes, chat? Let's go ahead and see how much farther we can actually go in here, and we'll find something to raid for tonight, or this morning, I should say. Next Saturday, we'll go ahead and continue this writing workshop, since we got a decent turnout, and y'all seem interested in learning more. And I do need to get to writing Christian's VT lore. I'm going to go ahead and save this really quick as well. Monsters turn out to not actually be monsters or not as monstrous or they are suffering from PTSD or something from and have decided that they can no longer do this as part of their job or many other reasons, honestly. It's a far cry from you used to be an assassin or a soldier and you were given a target that you did not want to take out. Uh, the kind of stress, the kind of... The kind of... Um, what's the term? It's just different, basically. Just different, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I wish I just like uh, thought about like maybe what is the like a tra the tra tra strategy approach, and that's why he was called to go out. The what approach? Strategy? Strategy? Tragic? Yeah. 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 So you want to create? You want to? You're looking to create a more tragic character, basically? Or? Well, maybe not tragic character, but you mean you want them, or rather, you believe that Christian has had a more tragic um, backstory, basically. Mm. Well, I mean, I'm thinking about, like, there's something that forced him to go out of the village, to abandon his, his duty, per se. Okay, this is different. Alright, so he flat out, like, leaves the village entirely. I mean, he goes to leave, but maybe but with a purpose. That, that's what I'm thinking. He, he leaves with a purpose. Okay. Okay. Well, well, I mean, most people most leave people their family home for a legitimate person, purpose, purpose or one reason or another. Um, very few people leave just for the sake of it, like unless they're suffering from wanderlust. Um, so there was a reason that he. So when he quit, it was not specifically because of the job. It's because he wanted to leave the village entirely for some reason. Yeah. He, he wants to leave because that something happened and he needs to go out and fix that. Oh, I see. I see. Maybe save somebody? Maybe Interesting. Interesting. Is the village still around? Mm. I mean, he needs to, he needs to, con to come back to finish the mission. So he was... He, did he choose to leave, or was he sent out by some other entity? No, he did choose to leave, but like they they gave him a mission, you know. Okay. He chose to leave, and they gave him a mission to leave for reasons. Yeah, he 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 leave for a for a for a for a mission, not like like maybe the last yeah. the last mission. Yeah. Welcome back, General Keys. How are you doing today? To freedom from or how are you doing right now? I should say. Somebody killed something from the village, but that will be like hmm. another headache if you will. Okay. Okay. So, so he's a monster hunter, hunter however, however, so he's a monster, so hunter, he's a monster hunter with a predilection with a, with a, uh, with a uh, predilection towards, towards cooking, towards but, cooking because but because, because his, father his father was a soldier, was a soldier he was convinced into becoming, becoming, becoming a soldier himself as part of a do as kind of his duty. And he mostly became a soldier so he could help defend the village from vicious monsters. But then something occurred in his backstory where someone was that was that someone an outsider or were they also part of the village? Boopy? Boop. Well, well, Boop. <laughs> I think I'm an, an outsider. So nah. You're not doing so well this morning? I'm sorry okay, to hear that. I hope the rest of your weekend's better. Costumes you usually don't go out. Don't go out. Yeah, okay. okay. Either, either, or, either, or, either you need either a really good reason to leave the, the village, or something, or something happened. happened. I see. And, and, I see. and they need to, to fix that to protect the village. I see. I see. Alright, so... All right, so some outsider went to the village, stole something important, and then left the village, and he needs to go out and get them and the item back, or just the item back? Do they care about the status of the person that's still the thief, or...? I mean... Oh, can you, can you repeat that? Oh, um, basically, so we're the... We're basically uh, talking about how... 
someone stole oh, something see. from the village. And I'm gonna give you a head pat. He has going on. He has gone on a mission to reclaim this item, or attempt um, to give you a head pat. I should is say. dealing with the thief himself also part of this mission, or is he chiefly concerned with getting his item back? No, he he needs to to get the item back. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. So the person who stole it is not as important as getting the item back. No problem. This is actually no very important for a few reasons. First off, if they don't care about the particular perpetrator of the stolen item, it gives it means that the item itself must be extremely valuable to the village for some reason. It also implies that this person, this outsider, really has no connection to the village itself. It's not like a former person that has a grudge. It's not it's not a particular person that they hate. It, doesn't, it's probably not someone that has a particular grudge against the village itself. Although, it also brings up... Are you over the age of 18? Alright then. You made... You turned 18 last month. I see. Then in that case... That free... Be quick. That's weird. Is the Discord command no longer or is the bots no longer working? Hey Death. You came unfortunately at the end of the stream. But uh, thank you for stopping by anyway. How are you doing this more or doing this morning? <laughs> I do have a variety of things to do today, so unfortunately I cannot afford to run the stream a little bit longer than usual. Oh, let me give you a head pat as well. You just woke up, it's fine. Yeah, this is pretty early for most people, isn't it? I've run up to stream as most, or most people who are able to go to the stream tend to be from Asia or Europe, where it's still early for them. <laughs> uh, we were doing some VTuber lore today and also doing a lot of creative writing talk. It's, uh, we were not able to finish this part to finish a running through the old podcast so we'll continue this next next week i'm going to go ahead and stop it here at 4140 and we're going to go ahead and look for someone to raid tonight or this morning i should say Who shall be our victim? There aren't that many people who are playing or that are online at this hour, but uh, who do you have in mind, Deathwish? I am all ears. Pause two. Hmm, you're playing music. Christopher, uh, a variety I'll gamer who plays a selective amount of games, musician, okay. and makes music here the same. Ah, I see, very nice. I don't want to actually get this stream copyright struck, so I'll have to silence that. But we, I do not mind uh, raiding a other art streamer. I think it would be fitting. But before that, let me go ahead and end off. Chat, thank you everyone for coming to today's writing stream. I know it's been a long time since we've done a creative writing stream in a while, and I promise to do more of these in the future. I'll need to start doing more in the future anyway, because I will be participating once again in, Nano Mar in National Novel Writing Month this coming November. So we need to get back into the swing of things. And also, I do want to finish Christian's VT lore that I promised him a few months ago. <laughs> Thank you, General Keys. Yep, we're ending for today. I do have stuff to do. Uh, today unfortunately so i cannot afford to run a longer stream than usual thank you for joining the discord and i will see y'all next monday just to let y'all know 
next week is going to be the last full week I'll be doing any streaming for a couple weeks because I will be gone the next the week after that uh, for a convention. Actually, no, I'll cancel that. I think I will be able to stream two more times, not two more times the week after this week. But uh, I'll let you know. I'll let you all know with the schedule via Twitter and, of course, also Discord if you're in my Discord. Uh, yep, you'll have to bully me next time. And yes, thank you very much for the suggestion. <laughs> so, I do stream, for those of you who are new, I do stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday as well from 9 p.m. to 12 midnight Central Standard Time. I stream a lot of video games in addition to creative writing and other pursuits. And I will see you all next time. We're going to go ahead and raid. Pause to let me enter in the thing here. Our raid message will be. Hmm. Let me see here. Which one of these emotes are are you are allowed for everyone to use? You may use any of our emotes here, which usually involve lols in some ha in some form. You may use death wish the you can use death wishes and use my own or you could use the email of your choice. We're rating with five viewers. It's going to be a fun time. Prepare for the big drop chat. Thank you for coming, everyone. Have a good night and morning wherever you are. Love you too. Let me pull up just a sharp bit, like to one twenty.